Waste another day, eyes on my display You say we need a change and I feel that you mean it You mean it But you're so right, we're losing track of time Buying things online and it's not like we need them We don't need them so can we just slow guys how's it going i hope you guys are having a wonderful day but today i am bringing you a video on how to do a character redesign for an already existing character in this case i'm doing a redesign of ariel from the little mermaid but i'm doing a redesign of her park dress which is actually a redesign of another dress apparently <laughs> since it's not actually in the movie also, this is going to be a two-part video, so the first part of this video will be me designing the dresses and then the second part will be actually me redefining and doing the final version of my design. But the reason I'm doing this dress is because I really like it and I wanted to um, actually make this dress in real life for charity work and basically it's kind of my dream dress. It's really beautiful. It's supposed to be made of like sea foam. Like that's the story is made of sea foam and bubbles. It's also like my favorite color. So I was really excited to try out like different like textures and stuff, especially when you have a color a dress color that's like basically the same, but it's supposed to be like bubbles. So in order to like do a redesign for a character, you got to understand what that character is, like who's the character, what they are, their story, whatnot, you know, all the basic information because you're going to want that information to understand more of what that character would wear. Also doing research really helps. And for this case, we're doing Ariel. What is Ariel? She is a mermaid. She lives in the sea. She's spunky. She's cute. She's a princess, which gives us a good recipe on making a really fun, exciting dress because, you know, it gives us elements of the ocean. The ocean's always a very lively, very colorful place to be. And the fact that she's a mermaid gives us the best of both worlds. Also, the fact that we're doing her human form gives a little more flexibility because we don't have to worry about a mermaid tail and like functionality and things like that. <laughs> And the dress we're doing is a princess dress, but it's blue, it's pretty, it's sparkly, it's bubbles. So from that, I, you just look up inspiration. Like, what kind of inspiration should you look up? Well, first, what kind of dress is it? Like, in this case, I'm sticking to the princess style dress because I really like how the shape of it is. But you're also very welcome to pick other style of dresses that so you can pick edwardian you could pick rococo you could pick victorian you can also even pick like a japanese kimono or some other things like that you have the freedom to design your design the way you want it even if it's very different long as you keep to the elements of that character in that design it can reflect what you're trying to do and i'm keeping to the same like shape for both designs because i didn't want too much of a difference but i did want to play with different variants of texture and like design. I also added some elements from her actual mermaid form, like her mermaid form, like the tail and whatnot. Like for the hip parts on one of them, she has like these little poofs that come out and I wanted to add that in the dress as well because it's part of her. I wanted to keep a few designs that she actually has in her original design on her. But from that, I played around with more um, other things. Like I kept pushing more like like simple patterns and pearls. I love pearls. So I wanted to have a whole bunch of pearls on her to represent the bubbles. I didn't really want any swirls because I didn't, I don't really like swirls too much. So I kept away from that, but I wanted also to play around with like uh, stripes lines to help um, showcase the movement. 
basically I just really want a lot of embellishments on her. Like I really wanted this to be really fancy. Like I didn't have to, but that's what I wanted to do for this design. When you do the design, it, you should always just continue pushing it. Like even if you get tired of it, like step away for a bit and come back and see what happens. It does take a lot of work and it does take time sometimes to get the feel of what you want. You don't want to be too um, overwrapped what you're doing. And I feel like when you're doing a design, it's always better to try not to be overwhelmed with the actual character when you're drawing them. Because it's mostly about the clothes. Like the other designs I did, if you see my other videos like Tinkerbell, my side on, it was quite busy. Like there was a lot going on. But it was still designed, but I wanted to represent a design that is easy to look at. That someone, if someone wants to use this design for their own cosplay or their own drawing, they can look at it and be like, oh, okay, I get it. So making things easy. And a lot of times, if you want to make things look easy on the eyes, you play with shapes. Now, I love playing with shapes. Shapes is always like your best friend if you understand how you're doing it. Because what is a drawing? What are you looking at? Like everything is made of shapes, not lines. Shapes. Now something that I've always seen other people do is that they over they overdo too much. Like they over add so much detail in their design that is really hard to look at and it just doesn't make any sense. Like I know if you want to make your drawing like really cool and awesome, you have all these amazing ideas, but putting everything together does not work. Like doing two designs like what I'm doing, it helps me put elements I like in two different designs and work with it and see what I like better and what can I change up from that. Waste another day, eyes on my display. You say we need a change and I feel that you mean it. You mean it. You're so right, we're losing track of time Buying things online and it's not like we need them